Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. How is everybody doing today? Good. I'm doing good. How are you I'm doing, doing Max? I'm, lo I'm looking <laughs> to see if anybody's actually, it's, it's that, that old time. We have to wait. Yeah, the, the, the lag. And it's not really a lag, but a little, yeah. it is a lag. Your mama is here. I know she is. Your mama's here. So is K Knight and Tommy Buck. Mm -hmm. Hillary Gatsby. Oh, it's raining. Well, wind. the afternoon for Hillary. It's cold in the Bayou State, 33 degrees. And really, everybody in Texas and down south, you guys be safe and warm. And mm -hmm. wow, what a crazy, crazy ordeal from that storm mm -hmm. and running on. Yeah. K Knight mm -hmm. was unable to find any good news. Oh, any good New York photos for McKinty in my albums? Oh. She's talking about next Thomas. week. Yeah, because next, because next week is Thomas Thomas McKinty <laughs> for the Wiki Tree Challenge. So, Karen says it's so cool to have your mother as a fan. I would hate to have her in here and she wasn't a fan. <laughs> she would be telling us all the bad things you did as a kid, but you didn't do bad things as a kid, I understand. I'm sure my mom still has, my mom has stories of me doing bad things as a kid, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, and then we have Jory and then Chris, our Chris F, Chris Ferriello. <laughs> So she's working on uh, Karen Lowe says that she's having fun with the U S black heritage connectors challenge in West Virginia. Mm. That's an interesting state for information about slavery and what happened during the civil war. People automatically assume that it was a Southern state. It wasn't. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause we have some of our, since this week is a rest week for the wiki tree challenge. Uh, we don't have a, we don't have a guest star. So a lot of people are doing other things to help with the tree. Mags is our guest star. Or yeah. I'm your guest star. We're your guest stars. So work on our trees, please and thank you. Oh yeah, let's see. My lords need a lot of work. Oh my lords. I have lots of brick walls if anybody wants to work on those. Thanks. I have lots of brick walls too. Come on, <laughs> work on my work on my lords. And work on my Comptons and my crisps. There's lots of stuff on my tree that needs work. Mm -hmm. well, apparently Karen's working on Dr. Gates' cousins in West Virginia. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Greg says we're both stars. Uh -huh. I just thought of the um, one movie with Tyra Banks where in Lindsay Lohan where she Tyra Banks was a doll and she comes to life and they sing the song You're a Star. Sorry, never mind. I just stop there. I don't know what movie you're talking about and I'm not sure I want to know. <laughs> it's, a kid, it's a it's a kids have, movie. It's we're supposed kid. to have a movie weekend this weekend. We we try and catch up on the movies that we have access to before the award show season starts. Mm -hmm. And the one of the awards, the Golden Globes is Sunday or next Sunday, next Sunday. So it's like the Super Bowl of movies. But I'm not adding that movie, whatever the name of it. I am not looking up Tyra Banks. In a it's, movie it's, a, it's a cute, it's a, you know, it's back from the 90s, like late 90s movie with. Um, so what you're yeah. telling me it's a classic. No, it's not a classic. It's a Disney movie. Is it? A, yeah, it's Disney. So it's a Disney kind of classic-y, good, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Piff says that he watched your fabulous interview from your link in the chat. I guess you mentioned oh, oh, it. Oh, yeah, weekend. yeah. That was the interview that, that they did with me for uh, Cheryl Hudson Passy. They all want to be, and they are all, like Cheryl Hudson Passy, I believe, and... Laura Wilkinson Hedgecock are two of the people that are coming on to as part of the challenge. So um, they were asking me all sorts of questions about the Wiki Tree Challenge this year. So that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun hearing them talking about the information they've seen about the other people that were done. They were excited about Henry Louis Gates. So that was really fun. Thanks for watching, Pep. Mm -hmm. And my mom is a. Uh... 
talking about another show, Bridgerton. But, you know, we don't have to talk about that show because it's too risque, I think. It's, it's not historically accurate. And no, I don't historically too. accurate people shows. It's interesting. It's, it's a different take, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then also Janine says, thanks for fixing the Anderson, li Anderson line mags. I guess you helped Janine lay Eileen Goodson. Yeah, the um, that somebody had gone in and done an, a questionable edit to the profile, and um, they the the profile itself had issues, and so I went in and fixed the profile, and then reconnected the people, talked to the profile managers about how they needed to make sure that they communicated with the person who made the changes, because the changes actually might be valid. We just don't know because we don't know what kind of research they're making their assumptions on. So I got all that straightened out. And thanks for, for commenting on that, Janine. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking me. I'm sorry it took so long. Yeah. We're all we're all good helpers here on Wiki Tree. We'll try to help you if we can. Yeah, yeah. And the biggest thing is just trying to promote the whole collaboration idea is communication between people who make changes. Mm -hmm. Just because somebody made changes to a profile doesn't mean it's inaccurate. It just means that if they didn't post why they were making the change, that's not a good thing. So. Yeah, collaboration. It, a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. So, does anybody have any, any other fun, fun things to say in the chat or questions? If not, we can move on to another what? question. What? What, what would we move on to, Sarah? Yeah, another question. I don't know. I think there's another question that we have to talk about, right? Maybe the Maybe. question um, of the week. Is that it? A bada boom, bada bing. I was about to be like, why is another mags coming into the stream? I know that was weird. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just, it's my screen. Uh, and I'll make it big. There we go. Interesting question of the week. Um, do you have African roots? So I have to tell you right off the bat, I didn't up, upvote it, but that's, I got to upvote that uh, question. Um, interesting question because, and something that was pointed out all throughout the answers is that technically the current theory on how we all originated was in West Africa. It was in East Africa, but that shifted to the West and people picked up on that here recently. But there's also been a new, um, theory that's been proposed that that possibly there were early origins also in China, but I don't know how accurate that is. I've just heard whispers about that. But currently the theory that is that is accepted is that we all basically came out of Africa. And that's where the the proverbial Adam and Eve were. So that was a lot of the discussion in the uh, discussions going on. Um, and some people had um, kind of interesting roundabout answers that I never could make hide nor hair of. Um, one of them was nothing but questions. So um, good on you for trying to get your information out there. And hopefully somebody can uh, do that. A lot of people talked about how they had Afro-Caribbean roots. Um, so uh, talking about how uh, somebody said that the majority of people that were brought over from Ghana were brought through the West Indies. Uh, and I think sometimes the trade routes took some of the ships through the West Indies before they came up the coast, um, which is an interesting thing as well. Um, somebody even said that um, their family were the protectors of the Holy Grail. Um, interesting theories and, and stuff getting thrown out. Um, I love the uh, my direct maternal great Great grandmother was a Ugandan royal, married to my great grandfather, a German aristocrat, who left Germany during the war and became a crocodile farmer in Africa. I thought you were gonna say crocodile hunter, but no, crocodile farmer. She says my grandmother was born there, as were all her siblings, but they were sent to a private school in England. So this is T. Dowding. Uh, and a lot of people wanted to know more about the crocodile farming. How do you, and I imagine, um, I started thinking about that and it would be, I guess, to get the hides for the leather because crocodile um, leather is very expensive. And I, 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 
I don't know. I know that you can eat crocodile meat, but um, yeah, Spencer Wells, it's a great story. That and um, yes, that is a great, great book. Thank you, Charles. Um, I'll write that down too. Yeah, and uh, The Seven Daughters of Eve is really fascinating as well. And a lot of people were talking about their mitochondrial roots, their maternal, matrilineal roots. Um, and people were giving some of their genetic information, like people who had done tests. And so, um, and even the genographic project from years and years and years ago uh, showed everyone originated in Africa near present day Ethiopia, South Sudan. So there were some discussions going on about the original ancestor and where they are in that kind of migration west, like I was talking about. Um, and Spencer's book is really, really good, but there, his, that some of the information in that book has been updated. So read that book and understand it. Spencer's stuff is very good, um, very good. So Una Greco had um, that, yes, she did have some uh, African stuff. She said, one of my ancestors was George Robert Mandeville, one of a group called the Sons of Africa, a late 18th century group of educated Africans in London who worked with the Quakers and William Wilberforce. William Wilberforce was a big uh, abolitionist uh, and brought people over to like do tours, African uh, Americans or Africans over to do tours so that people would see that slaves aren't slaves, slaves are real people kind of thing. Uh, I believe he was a slave in London and his daughter Elizabeth fell on hard times resulting in her transportation as a convict to Australia. Can you imagine being a slave, being in a free area, living your life as a free person and all of a sudden getting shipped off to Australia? No offense to Australia in the least, but at that time that was not a fun thing to have to do was travel there. Um, so that was really fascinating. Uh, and people were talking about their, their DNA tests. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. And here is uh, one. I got to upvote some of these. I haven't upvoted them yet. Shame. Um, what's that? Shame. Yeah. I always go through and upvote questions because they're, it's important to let people know that you're reading what they do. And obviously, we read them. Mm -hmm. um, what was I getting ready to read? There was one. The DNA shows that I have 3% African ancestry and probably from the general Senegal area. So 3% African in my research with, with clients, um, I've often found that a 3% African or a 3% of something in somebody's DNA, especially if it's a male line, it usually goes back to about the 1780s, 90s, 1800s, 1810s. So that's if you just want a general thing. It's not written in stone. stone. <clears throat> yes, I want to talk about that real quick in just a second, Pip. Um, DNA shows about 3%. My seventh great grandfather is named Edward Motingo. Uh, he's identified as a free Negro indentured slave in 1644. There's a book about our ancestry written by Joe Mozingo titled The Fiddler on Pant. Run. That sounds like a good book to read. Uh, it, it, it is suggested that Edward may have been a descendant of the Queen of Angola. There was another one up there who was um, married to uh, an African ruler, which was really cool. Lots of Jamaica and Bahama roots, um, Benin, Togo, Nigeria, Senegal, and the Ivory Coast. Um, let's see, down here again. So I know from documentary research, this is from Katie Owen, or Anne, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I know from documentary research that my fifth great grandmother had two daughters by a man who was said to be half black back around 1790, uh, Halifax County, Virginia. My fourth great grandmother and her sons were all classified as mulatto in the censuses until 1815. And then in 1851, my third great grandfather and his brothers went to court to be declared white. And that's how they were listed going forward. And a lot of people did that when they saw the whole Civil War issue coming on. People were trying to get themselves deemed something. Uh, DNA testing has confirmed this as both my grandfathers and aunts show 
uh, two to three percent West African heritage. Uh, but her DNA doesn't, but she's six generations removed and you may not show it, but your kid may show it. That's interesting mm -hmm. too. Um, let's see, Jessica Key answered that question with, there are quite a few court cases regarding establishing someone's race early in American courts. The one for Roba Coffee Vickers in 18 Den concerned whether Roba, the daughter of a mulatto, half black, half white man, uh, father and a white mother was herself mulatto and she married a white man and the court case was determined if her marriage was valid it was ruled it was so there's lots of other stuff going on about whether or not your marriage is is correct or not if if you'd married someone of of another race way back when horrible things that went on in the world you know uh, Maureen Randall says, I do, I'm Puerto Rican and have the typical DNA breakdown of roughly 60% European, 20% Native American, and 20% African. My African roots come by way of my dad and his paternal grandmother. Her mother was a slave. That's cool. That's, um, Karen Lowe, you should pick her up. That was Maureen Randall. You may already know her. Um, let's see. Recent studies show that 1% of all Scots belong to E1B1B of North African origin. That includes me, born in Scotland. That's from William Watson. He's active in the DNA project. Uh, so there's lots and lots of great answers, lots of interesting stories, lots of kind of crazy wild stories too um, in there. But um, go through and read through this stuff. It's really good and make sure you vote up for all of their answers. You know, Pip, your comment a few minutes ago about having to, to having no African ancestry, I, I'm in the same situation you are. And I was having a conversation with somebody uh, over the last week that I would, I would be skewered if I was to be on after watching the Farrell Williams episode with Henry Louis Gates, because I have absolutely no um, interesting DNA in my family. It's boring. And every single part of my family had slave owners. Um, and it, the slave ownership in the very, in the mountains was a lot different because it was subsistence, subsistence farmers who had a couple of slaves around who helped with a farm and, and did stuff like that. It wasn't like the huge plantations where the overseers were beating people constantly and, and all of that stuff. I'm not saying that good things happened with any form of slavery. It was just a different kind. But if if Henry Louis Gates were to do my family line, he would find that I had slavery in every possible limb on my tree as slave owners or, or enslavers. But he would also find that there is this guy that's not in my direct line, but he's like a first cousin four times removed from way back when who was an anti-abolitionist. He was very vocal, wrote lots of papers. He, he traveled around the country trying to keep people from ending slavery, which is, they would, Henry Louis Gates would hang me by my toes and, and, and yell that at me <laughs> if he were to do mine. I mean, it's, not a, it's not a happy story. Mm -hmm. But Pharrell Williams in Henry Louis Gates um, show last week said, a really profound thing, and I want to get the exact quote, I keep meaning to go back and watch it again, was that even though these kinds of things happened in his past, uh, whether it be slavery or whether it be an enslaver or, or whatever, or a rape or whatever, what his ancestors did, they did because they were living in the times. You know, they were living in the times and we were talking about people changing, trying to change their race so that they their marriage wouldn't be nullified or whatever. And what happened in my ancestors past does not inform in any way the way I live today. And I think that our black heritage project on WikiTree, as well as the um, way that we do uh, the enslaved or the enslaver categories, being able to identify the people in my family who were enslavers gives the people who are looking for their uh, ancestors 
on the land that my family may have owned or they may have enslaved them, that gives them the ability to find their their family. So I think it's really important to not say this never happened in my family, say, yes, this happened in my family and these are the records that I've been able to find and I hope to goodness you find what you're looking for. Now, somebody contacted me a while back about that crazy anti-abolitionist fellow in my family and wanted to know if I knew anything about the slaves on uh, this plantation in Liberty, Georgia. And at the time, I didn't didn't realize, I knew that this guy was in my family, but I didn't connect him with that, that plantation. Well, the plantation didn't do well, but I said, no, I don't know anything about it. I don't, I don't know anything about it. And so now I want to go back and this has been years and years and years and years ago. I want to go back and find her and say, I know a little bit about him now. What can I help you with? But at the time I had no idea. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. A lot of people were commenting while you were talking, Megs. Um, Janine said that some of my mother's ancestors own slaves, um, and there are African Americans in my area that are kin to me because some of my ancestors are having children with African Americans. And and usually, and Janine, I don't mean to throw this at you, but usually that wasn't a very good thing. That how that happened. Mm -hmm. Your ancestors having children with. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Son-in-law law had a documented African ancestry. It's been an eye-opener for me. That's cool. It's cool. It's always good to broaden your horizons and, and to be more inclusive. Mm -hmm. More inclusive. Yeah. And we did have some people pop in, like, hello, Ruth, from, and then M. Jordan. Hey, Ruth. Hey, M. Boy, you popped in on an, on Our, an interesting question of the week. <laughs> but, yeah, it's good. It's good to talk about it. It's important to talk about all that stuff, you know. Like you said, it happened. We can't hide it. History is part of. It doesn't inform how I live. Mm -hmm. I love that. I want to go back and get Farrell Williams' exact quote because he put it so succinctly. And it was what Pip Shed said that he spends time. What was his quote? Go back up and find that again. Uh, Pip. Which one? Let's see. I'm pretty sure DNA that I have no African roots. Uh, what I am dealing with is the ownership of Africans by my ancestors. And it's, it's not, it's not that you're dealing with what they did. It's what you can do to help other people do better by what your family didn't do. Does that make sense? Like if you find records, make sure that you put that enslaver or slaveholder, um, slave owner in South Carolina category up. So Yes, that is cool, Karen Love. Mm -hmm. That is very yeah, cool. Because we have Emma leading the project and we're having the connectors um, that challenge this month. And, and it is Black History Month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It is. Great, great question of the week. So, I guess we can move on to. I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess. Our profiles of the week. This week we were featuring, because with the recent death of Mary Wilson, who passed away on the 8th, I believe of February last, earlier this month, um, we featured a whole bunch of other Motown artists this week. And for those of you who don't know, I wanted to say what Motown is. So Mo there is, so you have Motown, it's also, it's a recording, recording studio album, but it's also a music style as well, kind of like rhythm and blues music. So that's kind of what Motown is for those of you who don't know. And then obviously the American record label hey, owned hey, by Universal Music Group. Hey, uh, I just want to point out that your mom's correcting you. The ninth. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> that was a one day off. Yeah, my mom looked at some of the prof I had my mom look at the profiles of the week this week. So she was on she was browsing on Wikitree. Because my mom doesn't have a account, but sometimes I'll have her look at stuff. Um, Which okay. is great because Wikitree is so open and accessible for people. Mm -hmm. Yes, even if you don't have an account, everything you're able to access is still free. Yep. That's great. 
So Mary Wilson, uh, she was the founding member of the Supremes. She also um, was the best charting female group in U.S. chart history and the best Motown act of the 1960s as well. And yet, well, I don't know. It says on the eighth here. Do we have a typo? I don't know. Oh my gosh, she has the same birthday as me. Oh, oh my gosh, we're birthday twins. You must be related. <laughs> because we have the same birthday. <laughs> wow, that's cool. I didn't, I guess, I, I, while well, I looked at these beforehand, I, I didn't notice the, we have the same birthday. So the question is, is she born on, was she, did she die on the 8th or the 9th? Who is right and who is wrong? I don't What's know. What's on the profile? It says the eighth. Can't you see it? I am sharing the screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. I am. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes on Wednesday, I thought I was sharing the screen, and I was like, "Yeah, you see, guys," and I was sharing the screen. I did that in my interview this week. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I will admit I was looking to see who I was closest related to, which I already know. In that list of people, it's Judy Russell, but she's not a Motown person. Um. Marvin Gaye and Debbie Dean are my closest. I think Debbie Dean was my closest. Of too. course it was. And I had to show my mom saying that I was right because, you know, you always want to promote when your mother show says it. you Show right. it. Did you already show it and I missed it? Oh. I did already show it. Yes, I did. <laughs> so Mary Wilson has the same birthday as me, both Pisces. So now you guys know that my birthday is coming up. There you go. <laughs> So that is Mary Wilson, died on just this past week. Uh, doesn't say, at least on here, how she how she died, but she was 76, died in Las Vegas. So next up we have Debbie Dean. Um, she had, she went by multiple names before she recorded with Motown, Penny Smith here and Debbie Stevens. And she was actually the first white female solo recording artist. Um, kind of a big deal. I think that's pretty cool. And then she had her first single at Motown was Don't Let Him Shop Around. And it re oh. barely reached the Billboard's Hot 100 charge. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then she, it says, so she, her some of her songs have become a northern soul favorite, the Why I Am Loving You. And that is a music and dance-based movement um, that became popular in England. So, but I think it's pretty cool. First white female solo recording artist. And she changed her name a lot, obviously. <laughs> That's our other one. I am closest to Debbie Dean as well. And I'm all kind of connected to them the same, kind of like the same beginning line. I kind of, I was kind of looking at that earlier. So next we have Marvin Gaye. Uh, we all, we all know we probably all are familiar with Marvin Gaye. I love Marvin Gaye. Let's Get It On. And um, he received a Grammy Award for his sexual healing album. Um, and But he actually passed away. I don't know if many of you know this, but actually he was murdered by his father, Marvin Gaye Sr. So that's kind of after they got into a fight. Because I don't know, it was a the whole story behind that, but they were arguing and then his dad shot him in his house. So that's kind of sad. And Debbie but. Dean and Marvin Gaye come to me through my same line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have all of them start off kind of the same through my Lewis side. Kind of that way. I don't know if, because I know we've been making lots of connections and making more connections this past month, so I don't know if some of my connections have changed. That'd be interesting to, to see. So next on our list, we have Albert Finney. Now, a lot of people were like, Albert Finney? What? He's an actor, <laughs> right? But he did have, a, he did release a Motown record in the 1970s. In the late 70s? Yeah, 1976? 77. Mm -hmm. it, was actual call, it was actually called Albert Finney's album. <laughs> uh, he died a few years ago in 2019. 
Uh, but he's all, but he probably is better known as his, for his acting career. He was in Annie, the Orient Express. He also played Scrooge. Um, so he, yeah, Albert Finney. That's our next, because he he did a lot of singing in his acting career. So he then he really did nothing. Then we have the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. Probably more familiar with Michael Jackson, all of us. So he started off at a young age with his family, with his siblings in Jackson 5. And then he moved on. You know, he married um, Elvis Presley's daughter. And yeah, then he died. Oh, oh, wow, it's been over 10 years. That's kind of crazy to think about. It's been over 10 years since he's passed away. Yeah. Michael Jackson, King of Pop. Next on our list, Tina Marie. She she was actually godmother to Marvin Gaye's daughter. Okay. <laughs> and um, she, while she is best known for her her song "Love Girl." She also recorded the rock influence track Lead Me On for the soundtrack of Top Gun. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We have any comments in the chat, Mags, about stuff? Um, Karen Lowe says she's 13 degrees from Debbie Dean and Michael Jackson because her daughter is a Presley descendant. I never knew that about your mini me. Mm -hmm. um, your mom says that Marvin Gaye is, uh, did great true romantic music. Uh, some people are singing. Um, Ruth Hinman is singing Stop in the Name of Love. <laughs> M. Jordan says there's a fantastic video about Motown Hitsville available here on YouTube. Mm. Um, uh, oh, Marvin Gaye, I was trying to put your mom's two, two questions together um and then somebody says what are we doing for roots tech we'll talk about that later well it's we, <laughs> we, we got a plan stan yeah got a plan stan okay then we have one more profile and i'm not sure who my mom was talking about who he wrote all the lyrics for his album hey, hey marvin gay okay okay wasn't sure who i figured that out okay and then the last one we have is Bobby Darren, born Walden Robert Casotto. Of a Italian descent, I would assume, from that last name. Um, he was a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, impressionist, and actor. Um, he performed jazz, pop, rock and roll, folk, swing, and country music. <laughs> so we have another Elvis Presley uh, connection, Janine uh, says that she's 18 degrees from Michael Jackson because of Lisa Marie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my connection to Michael Jackson was through the Presley as well. Now I got to go look. Mm -hmm. Finney wrote all the lyrics for his album. Albert Finney wrote all the lyrics for his album. Where Not it? Marvin Gaye. Maybe Marvin Gaye did, but at least Albert Finney for that album. He wrote all of his lyrics. That's pretty cool. So Bobby Darren, he found out in the eight in, in the sixties, shortly before he passed away, that his who he thought was his sister was actually his mother, and his mother was actually his grandmother. So that's a always an interesting thing to find out. And it was late in his life that he found this out. So what thirty, forty, fifty was in his 30s and he passed away fairly young so and yeah so those are our profiles of the week we also have in our connection finder <coughs> the two our two past guest stars so judy russell and dr gates so i am 26 degrees from dr gates let's see how that does through, you know, through my dad, obviously, but 26 degrees from Dr. Gates. Now let's see about 
Judy Russell. I'm 20 degrees from Judy Russell. Oh my gosh, I'm, 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 oh no, I thought it was, I thought this was all green. Just kidding. Oh no. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> I thought it was pure green. I was like, oh. For the, new, for the new people who are joining us, if you're all of your information in the connection finder, not the relationship trail, but the connection finder, if all of it's green, that means it's a, a real live blood connection. Yeah, and then you can and then you can actually click here if you well you can this just shows you the closest connection, but they might actually be related to you. If you wanted to search through a common ancestor. Or if you wanted to search through maybe a paternal or maternal line instead. Let's see if, no, we're not, I'm not related to uh, Judy Russell, but. I'm 17 from Judy and mine goes green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green. I'm mine was just, mine just changed color twice. So Mine green, yellow, changed green. color twice more than you. Yours only changed colors once, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it went from green to yellow to green. Yeah, yeah, mine went green to yellow to green to yellow. Yeah, this is my close connection, Debbie Dean, through my Lewis Hutchin Hutchison Rab line. And I'm through the Presleys as well, back to Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm, yeah. Sounds, I think that's, I think that's probably how most... It out the Jackson family tree, but it would be hard to swing our connections away from the Presley side with their well-known southern roots mm -hmm. yeah i think a lot of people are probably connected to michael jackson more through his wife than any other way uh karen says she's 13 degrees from debbie dean Ooh, i love it when the uh, it scrolls right when you're reading it uh 13 degrees from debbie dean <coughs> Janine, Look, i'm actually direct i'm actually related to debbie <laughs> dean let's see how hold on Woo Let's see how I'm related. We are related. Hold on. Find it. Do it faster. 19th cousins twice removed from Debbie Dean through my dad's side. We're both descendants of Donald McDonald. Not Ronald McDonald. I was going to say, was he in a cartoon? <laughs> from Scotland, the Lord of Isles. I am the 20th great granddaughter of Donald McDonald. If all of the, if everything is how it's, you know, there might be, but according to this, 20th great granddaughter of Donald McDonald. That's fun to say, Donald McDonald. Donald McDonald. Okay, I'm done, sorry. I hear he's well, done great things for charity. Ronald McDonald? Yeah. Donald McDonald. <laughs> you know why you caught that? <laughs> so smart. <laughs> I, I'm quick. I'm quick. Okay, so. Oh, and no, no. I just got an earworm from Greg Clark. He said, Old McDonald? Oh, he is an old McDonald. <laughs> from the 1300s, man. Yeah, no, I don't hear Ronald McDonald and think time to eat. Oh, sorry. Mm. He was um, a Lord of the Isle. That he never knew the distinction between the green and the yellow on the connection finder, so he just learned something new. He learned and, something new. And Greg, pertaining to a conversation we had earlier this week, I have an old template that I wrote, and I need to share that with you. What do you mean, a template for what? I'm not going to tell you because it's a secret. <sighs> He's working on a new app, and I think oh. I have a template that may help him with that app. Oh, okay. So now it is time for, I think, maybe our favorite part of the Saturday. Can we guess what it is? The time to go. That's and our Where's favorite. Mindy? By where's the way. Mindy? Yeah, Mindy's been hanging out with us so much, and then all of a sudden she's not here. What's up with that, Sarah? Oh, no, she said she was going to not come on today. Because since we don't really have, since we don't have. It's a rest a, week. Yeah, it's a rest week. So she's take, she deserves a rest, too. She's been working very hard. Mindy is kind of what happens in the background, the magic. Yes. When, when WikiTree people jump into big projects, it is all consuming. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mindy's still around. If you, She's awake yeah. right now. So if you send her a message, she will answer you. But she she's just, probably she, watching. You don't want to put on her face. You don't want to put on her face. probably cringing right now. What kind of stories can we tell about Mindy right now? 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to talk about the Wikitree presentations and everything else about Roots Tech in just a minute. Mm -hmm. So let's do the photos first. So our theme is wintery fun. I guess we're at the end of winter. Yeah, I think it's almost spring. It's almost, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have snow on the ground till May. <laughs> well, at least the seasons wise, unless you're in Australia, then this doesn't apply to you, but. We are kind of Northwestern hemisphere centric around here. Yeah. So we have this one, Marietta Marvin, Kansas, 1946. I wonder what time of year this is. Like what in Kansas, do you think this would be December, January? She's wearing a mink coat, it mm. looks like. A mink, ooh, fancy. Oh, then it looks, look, they're related, the Marvins. How cute. They probably, their, their mom was like, okay, stand on this bridge. I'm gonna take a photo of each of you. You know, I never thought in my life that I would go outside in boots like he has them completely undone on the ankles. Mm -hmm. But here, this year I've started doing that when I run outside. Isn't that funny? I guess because you're only out there for a little bit. Well, no, like I get in the car, I drive places, I go in, I'm like, why am I not doing up my boots? Maybe I'm getting old and it's hard to lean over. Maybe. I like this one. This one looks fun. They made an igloo and posing in front of it. I wish it was bigger. I should have a bigger photo. My next door neighbors have an igloo. They made an igloo? Yep. This, do they always have it or they just made it like for this season? This is the second year that they've been in that house and this is the first year they've done an igloo. Look at this photo. Oh my gosh. That's adorable. He's feeding the little, are they, did he say reindeer? Deer, oh, that would have been funner if it was reindeer, but deer is fun. That's so cute, little baby deer. That's my favorite photo. I think my favorite photo of all time. I don't know. <gasps> and there's oh, not even a puppy. Is it my favorite? There? I think, I, I just think it's cute. There's just not the, even a puppy in it. I know, but de baby deer are cute. Oh, this one's pretty cute too. Oh, that's they're, they're screaming at their mom who's taking the photo of them in their snowman. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. They did that pretty custom. Look, they've got arms defined. Mm -hmm. I what? wonder what they used for the, um, the eyes and the I, nose. I want to guess that that's charcoal from a grill. Like mm -hmm. the, or maybe the, the coal that they got as their gifts from Santa. Well, and it looks like they were, you know, they probably got lots of cold. <laughs> it looks like he has a little, it looks like he made him a little bun. He looks like he has a yeah, little. Yeah, he's got a little hair thing on his head. Uh -huh. <laughs> and arms. You don't yeah. see him. One of my neighbors does a snowman every year that has a big handlebar mustache. Hmm. That's fun. <laughs> this little kitty playing in the snow. Looks like his eyes are closed. It's a bright sunny day. Mm, in Colorado in 1952, November 1952. You have to have good blinds to sleep here. Because if it's a full moon and it's a snowy night, the sun reflects off of the snow that's on the ground, or the moon does, and the snow and the clouds and the snow that's falling. And it's like, it's mid, it's beautiful sunny day outside. It's weird. Sorry. So here is a uh, people ice, ice skating in Tennessee. So cute. I'd be, I'm not, I don't know, I guess I haven't had much opportunity to ice skate, so I'm not very good at it. I, I've been to ice rinks in Miami, <laughs> but I've never actually skated on real ice. No, that's a lie. I did once in New York. I did skate on real ice, but it went very poorly. Karen, if you have to leave before we cover the the roots tech stuff, don't worry. Show up here next Saturday and you'll find out. Oh, you'll find out. You'll find out. I wonder, do you think they were just kind of sweeping the snow out of the way? Looks like they have some brooms sweeping some snow. I don't know. Maybe. It's fun to guess what they're doing in photos sometimes. 
Oh, and I always look in the windows for people. I didn't look at that one. Oh, maybe look in this one. Is there anybody over there? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That, <laughs> that's just spooky in and of itself. <laughs> it looks like the house has a face. You see the eyes and the yeah. nose over Ooh, here wow. at the right. I do like that one. It's cute. Another ice skating one. Oh my goodness, says, it's a kitty cat in the snow. Okay, this is my favorite one though. That's it. K Knight says that there was a swamp behind the house where they ice skated. Lots of people build little ice skating rinks in their backyards here for mm -hmm. the little, little people. And every neighborhood has a, an ice skating rink at the community center. We have, oh. look, they, they have a free space page for family cats. That's a great idea. Look, look at all those cats. Look at all, look, look at all these cats, guys. I'm just sneezing myself here. There's 14 images. I, I'm getting sidetracked, but there's 14 images of cats on this free space page. I think we should all take just a moment to appreciate that. How many photos they took of their cats. Look at that crazy fur color. Yeah. Somebody I know has one that's calico and half the face is black and half the face is that kind of beigey color. Okay, we took a quick segue into this these cats. Oh, look, it's in a tree. Your mama says that my aunt in Pennsylvania had a small pond where they skated. So did your mom, did you know your mom I skated? I Yeah, I, I believe that. Because, <clears throat> you know, she is from... She spent time in the, in the world. Okay. Wait, did, was that the last one? Was, was there another one on this page? That was the, yeah, okay. So the cat one, we looked at some cats. And then this one. They're all bundled up in the snow. That kind of looks like my front walkway, except the snow is a bit deeper. I was looking outside today in the snow. I have a, a window that's about four feet off the ground. And the snow is almost up to the window. <clears throat> so that, that was our last photo of the week. And then we also looked at some not photos a week of pets. I think that was great. <laughs> <laughs> if there had been puppies, I would have been happy. I, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sure next time I will find a puppy free space page so we can look at it. Okay. So we'll talk about, well, we don't, have a genealogy guest star this week for the Wiki Tree Challenge. And for those of you who are not aware, what the Wiki Tree Challenge is, is our year long event where each week we take on, for most weeks, we take on a genealogy guest star. And they we work take on them on. It's a big. It's a big what? Oh, she went away. Where we try to make their tree more accurate and complete. You're not looking at me. I'm doing a fighting. Oh, no, I'm not. Everybody else can see me but you. <laughs> well, so what were you doing? You were fighting? You were taking them on like you were in a oh. boxing match. There you go. <laughs> Ooh, see, it get, we're, never mind. <laughs> so this past week, we on Wednesday, we had Judy Russell on as we gave a wrap up for her week. And, and she, she before was, she came on, she was a great skeptic. Of, of yeah, of collaborative people. online treats. Yeah. yeah. She, but we... Uh, she, she admitted on Wednesday that we have almost totally converted her. <gasps> almost <laughs> totally converted her. What kind of... That's so decisive. <laughs> I'm a very decisive person. Very decisive speaking person. <laughs> so she, she was very impressed with what we did. And she actually wrote a new blog post about the Week 2 Challenge because we had a volunteer who showed her a mistake that she had made in her not that and there was a typo on the newspaper for one of the obituaries so when our volunteer went to go look for that obituary on that date she couldn't find it and so judy was like why this is correct i know i found this obituary but apparently the couple of pages on the newspaper had the wrong date on it while the overall newspaper like the beginning pages had the right date so that 
That's kind of what she talks about in her blog post. It was actually Maddie Hardman who found who commented saying that she couldn't find it and prompted Judy to go on this mission. So, and then we were talking about on Wednesday how it's always good to have a fresh set of eyes on your tree, which is why our collaborative tree is so important. Um, and she said that we're, she also had another good quote, that we are filling a need. And because what we're doing is so wonderful and great. And she says, we're filling a need in the genealogy world. That's so, so cool. Cause she really, she, she's a person who, who is a lot of black and white. It's either this or it's that. And it, there's like a genealogist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's very, very specific about how things should, should be. And to hear her say that she really appreciates WikiTree now after being a skeptic, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's great. Mm -hmm. This yeah, we, challenge is doing such great things for WikiTree. Yeah, we we we've Im we've impressed every single genealogy genealogy guest star right now. Well, we only broke down one of Judy's walls because she actively research research researches her. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm laughing because you know how Barbara Walters or Henry Louis Gates will make their their guests break down and cry. Mm -hmm. When you said we've only broken down one, I was thinking, who did you make cry? I it saw it looked like Dr. Gates was Dr. Gates was pretty emotional in his He was. Yes, we almost made him cry. Almost. And yeah. Judy seemed very she was very impressed. And we've made we've impressed everybody so far, so I'm excited for the future. And to talk about the future, since everybody's asking me, asking us about Roots Tech. We aren't doing anything official with Roots Tech, but we are going to be doing some special stuff for Roots Tech to kind of promote WikiTree more and the WikiTree Challenge. I don't want to give everything away just yet, but next week we're going to be on Saturday instead of what we normally do. It's going to be more geared towards what, showing what we found for the Wiki Tree Challenge so far, promoting the Wiki Tree Challenge, it'll be more set presentation. So we'll talk about that. And anybody, if you guys want to promote Wiki Tree during Roots Tech, because a lot of people, more so than ever, because since this is a virtual event, a lot of people are going to be on their computers online. Yes. Looking <clears throat> at stuff. So if we're promoting Wiki Tree during this weekend, yes, the Wiki Tree Challenge, I think it'd be very beneficial. And at 11 o'clock, I might have to leave early because my Roots Tech presentation is at 11 o'clock on next Saturday. Ooh, what are you presenting? I'm doing a, a DNA learning basics for why DNA. It's called Simply Why. And it's just a oh, I saw, I saw that. I saw tutorial that. about why DNA and why it's important to gen genealogy. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I was looking at, I don't know if, Roots Tech is free, so I encourage everybody and anybody, even if you don't aren't particularly interested in genealogy. I mean, it's free, and then you have access to all of the webinars for a year, I believe. And I was looking at resource. the number yesterday. There's 300 and something people registered. 300 and something thousand people registered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And they're also still having the feature where you can see who you're connected to, who also registered on Roots Tech? Yeah. If you have the Family Tree app from Family Search, it's free and it goes on your phone. You, uh, When you log into it at the very top, it says find relatives at Roots Tech. Mm -hmm. and you can yeah. click on that. There is no other Galden at Roots Tech. I'm the only, the only one. There's only two other calluses at Roots Tech so far. There's only three of us. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's fun being a person with a strange surname, which also makes family history more fun because it's easier to find stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's it's kind of interesting because I know, especially from where my dad's family is from, there are so many people with the callous last name, but I guess they're not doing this stuff online yet. You know, they're probably still... Are they Cuban or... Callous. Callous. Virginia. Virginia? I don't yeah. know. Callous is in Cuban. I don't know. I don't know why either. I always thought that Callus was a, a, a South American name. Nope. My, my, 
mother's maiden name. No, that's Italian, so I don't, I don't know. You're probably thinking of- What is the Knights of Pallas? Is it English? Yes. Technically, oh. the, the root name itself is a French port, but a lot of it stems Hello. from England. Yeah. That's so cool. I mm -hmm. see. I have to change my whole, I guess it was the other name that you used to have. That, yes, um, that's that was it. The other name that I used to have. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, not too many Gamalero either. My mother's maiden name because it's Italian and I haven't really seen it around. I'm the only one working on Gamalero online, at least. And also Callus. I'm kind of only the singular researcher on Wikitree actively. So it's always, but sometimes I'll get, you know, cousin bait. Sometimes I'll get people, they're like, oh, hey, I see that you've been researching. But then they kind of drift away, but it's still cool to have those initial. There, are, fortunately for me, there are, are are several golden researchers on Wikitree. Liz Shiflett is one. She's a distant cousin, and um, Darlene Athy Hill, and there's another person that, that works. That's so that's unusual for me, and that's fun. That's one of the things that makes Wikitree so great is that you meet other people who have the same interests. And I can't imagine that I would be much of anywhere in the world and find other people interested in researching my Goldens. Mm -hmm. We can yep. dream. Dagmar, Thor's daughter says she has no, nobody else but that name, but she's the only one with this full name. Dagmar, Thor's daughter. And Greg says um, from his adopted line and one from his biological because line. Because he found two new third cousins he's never heard of before. That's exciting. So maybe we'll all find some new cousins this weekend since Roots Tech is free. So a lot more people are able to access it, you yeah. know, and they're not, you know, because usually you would have to physically go to Salt Lake City. But now it's all virtual and free. I have to say, though, that. I am going to miss, 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 mm -hmm. miss wearing orange for days and days and days. Yeah. Rooming with you. I know, and, we mags are roomies. And be able to hang out for the week with all of my Wikitree friends in the Wikitree booth. Yeah. That is yeah. one of the highlights of my years, and it's it's so fun. And to be able to see in-person Wikitreeers walk up. We have a big, big... Uh, banner that everybody signs with their wiki tree id mm -hmm. so it's fun to see that all covered up with people at the end of, of roots tech it's so fun mm -hmm. yeah it, it is fun and no, hopefully next year no the god derms are not related to my gall dens mm -hmm. we are a unique little group of people yeah. i think it might be welsh i don't know she's still trying to figure that out it's an ongoing mission yeah well, I get unless anybody has any questions, we will see you on Wednesday where we will be interviewing Thomas McKenty because we are starting his week. And if you don't know Thomas McKenty, you should show up for this. He is one of the most colorful personalities in the genealogy world. Very colorful. Mm -hmm. Especially his hair. I was going to say, <laughs> his hair. <laughs> I wonder if he'll have it done in orange for next week. I should send him a note. Hey, you need to do an orange hair. Okay, yeah, maybe if we if we push him, maybe he oh, can do it. I'll send him a note right now. Okay. Hey, do your hair in orange. Yeah. So but next week, also, okay. I mean, he don't want to be out too much, so maybe no. he'll change it. So next Wednesday, Thomas McGinty will start his week. I know people are already. Even though it's a rest week, people are already excited and they're already planning on what they're going to do. Well, and somebody already said, was it, it was it, um, Karen? I, Karen? Karen said she's already working on the McKenties. Mm -hmm. so. Was it Karen? I think so. I know she, she's working on that. I know there's Greek Orthodox in there. I know that. Yeah, he, he put his stuff, he put his stuff on Wikitree early on. He even put Judy Russell, he made Judy Russell's profile on Wikitree. <laughs> Way back before, you know, you couldn't put living, it was more difficult to put living people on Wikitree. But besides that, so we'll see you on Wednesday. Next Saturday, keep a lookout on social media for our, you know, for our Roots Tech stuff. Like I said, we're not doing anything officially, officially Roots Tech, but we are promoting Wikitree. So help us do that so we can grow. 
until next time, my friends. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. I love Saturday.